I'm Kristen King from The Investing Channel, and you're watching Smart Money, the show that gives you the inside edge on the bets that the movers and shakers on Wall Street are placing. This week, we are revisiting a sector that we haven't touched on for quite a while, and that sector is biotech and pharmaceuticals. The pharmaceuticals market is worth as much as $1.3 trillion annually, and the U.S. is the largest market of its kind in the world. The industry spends around $60 billion per annum on R&D, and the average cost for major pharmaceutical companies to bring a new drug to the market is some $2.6 billion. The rewards for success, however, can be immense. Adalimumab, a drug used to treat autoimmune diseases and rheumatoid arthritis, brought in $58 billion in revenues for developer AbbVie in just three years, whilst Pfizer's anti-cholesterol treatment Lipitor grossed almost $95 billion in revenues between 1992 and 2017. However, for every success, there are many failures. Research published in Nature.com in December 2019 estimated the failure rate in drug development to be as high as 96%, with a further 90% failure rate during clinical trials, meaning only a tiny fraction of proposed new treatments ever see the light of day. It's for these reasons that there has been huge growth in the number of startup specialist drug development companies. These smaller businesses often concentrate on just one or two treatment areas. They are more tightly focused, nimble, and cost-effective than the major drug companies, having far lower headcounts and other overheads. These smaller drug development businesses couldn't exist without support network, however, and in particular, access to funding. In 2019, there were 941 fundraising deals in the sector, according to data from PitchBook, and those deals raised a total of $19.2 billion. Startups in the biotech sector often gravitate to an IPO, and the 10 largest IPO deals in 2020 raised $3.19 billion between them. Overall, 78 biotechs went public last year, a 77% increase over the number of listings in 2019. One business that made the transition from a startup to a listed company in 2015 is Summit Therapeutics. Listed on NASDAQ, the company has a market cap of $690 million and a share price of $7.44. Summit is what we might think of as a transatlantic company, with offices in Massachusetts and the university cities of Cambridge and Oxford in the UK. Summit is developing the next generation of antibiotics, drugs that complement and work in combination with the human biome. Using its proprietary Discover platform, Summit is building up libraries of what it terms mutant bacteria, which it analyzes to work out which genes and gene sequences are vital to the survival of the bacteria, and then creates antibiotics that can target those same genes to eradicate the bug. The company has three treatments undergoing phase three clinical trials. In phase three, up to 3,000 subjects participate in a study that can last several years. Data gathered in the trial is used to determine how the new medication works compared to the existing treatments for the conditions it aimed at. If a new drug can demonstrate that it's at least as safe as and more effective than the existing treatment, then it can move forward to FDA approval and large-scale phase four testing. Summit Therapeutics has been in the headlines in recent days, publishing Q1 2021 results, which showed the company had bolstered its finances and had $102 million of cash and cash equivalent with which to fund its research efforts, money that the company believes will be sufficient to see it through to at least Q4 2022. The business doesn't have an income or make money. The net loss for Q1 2021 was $17.5 million, up sharply from the $6 million it lost in the same period in 2020. Of course, increased expenditure is to be expected as the firm's treatments progress through their clinical trials. Summit Therapeutics CEO Robert Duggan is backing the business with hard cash and has been buying the stock. Mr. Duggan has been a director of the company since 2019 and took up the role of CEO in April 2020. He is the founder of Duggan Investments, a venture capital and equity investment business, and has a track record of building, developing, and selling drug businesses. Most notably, he sold Pharmacilix to AbbVie for $21 billion in 2015. Mr. Duggan was both CEO of and the largest investor in that business. Mr. Duggan obviously likes what he sees in Summit Therapeutics, 
because he has recently purchased 11,365,921 shares in the business at a price of $5.54 for consideration of $59.56 million. He last bought the stock back in November at $3.34, investing just under $47 million on that occasion. In total, Mr. Duggan now owns 67.66 million shares in the company. The stock has been on the move since the news of Mr. Duggan's investment broke on May 14th, with the shares up by 35.5% over the last week alone. However, they remain well below their 52-week high of $12.30 posted in early February of this year. When someone of Mr. Duggan's stature and reputation invests substantial sums of money into a business, you have to take note. His presence alone, of course, can't guarantee the success of clinical trials or secure FDA approval for some of its treatments, but it's a tremendous vote of confidence and one that clearly hasn't gone unnoticed on Wall Street. That's all we have time for today, but as usual, make sure you do your due diligence before making any investment decisions.